head and wash the Lord. Let's magnify His name. Let's praise the Lord is here. The presence of the Most High God is here. His presence is awesome in this place. Somebody just praise the Lord. Somebody worship the God. It says we worship the least man like Him. He is the great I am, the great Yahweh. Go ahead and worship God. Just go ahead and worship the Lord. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your name. We lift your name on I, our Father in heaven. Father, Lord, receive the glory this morning. Receive the honor this morning, our God. Father, we lift your name on I, our God. The rich in this land like you, our God, Father, Lord. Receive all the glory, our God. Father, we worship, we bless your name, O Lord. We exalt you this morning in your presence, our Father God. Father, we pray to you, O God, that may you make it an allowed in somebody's life, O God, this morning, O God. Talk to somebody this morning, O God, in your own special way. In the name of Jesus, Son of the living God, we frustrate every work of Satan. We condemn every evil assignment. Whatever the enemy has planned against any member of this church, my Lord, shall not work. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I will ask the church just to take our seats. Amen, briefly. Thank you so much. It's a wonderful day. Amen. Tell your neighbor it's a wonderful day. Amen. Just welcome your neighbor. Smile at your neighbor. Welcome them, amen. I just want to appreciate our dear father in absentia. And indeed for the trust that he has upon the leadership. Amen. And allow me also to acknowledge and appreciate the presence of our mother, a big one for our mother. <laughs> All my fellow uh, elders and your sp uh, spouses, I salute you, sir, in the, the, the diaconate. All ministry leaders, I salute you, amen. And I also acknowledge the presence of my dear uh, ice cream, a big hand for as well. Okay. Luke 10, 1, 2, 3. We'll begin reading from 1 up to verse 3. Then we'll jump to 17. Amen. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into, have, into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. 17. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to tramp on the snakes. Somebody shout, I have given you authority. I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Oh my God. However, do not rejoice that the spirits, do not only rejoice that the spirit submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I've given you authority. To trample on snakes and scorpions. And nothing will harm you. Oh my God. Don't just rejoice that you could cast out demons. And they submitted. But rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I've titled my message this morning. Walking in spiritual authority. Somebody shout authority. Hallelujah. The word authority is used in the Bible 37 times. Beginning in Esther 9.29 through to Revelation 13.2. It is used 37 times. Very, very important word. Amen. 
And I want us to understand this word authority before we go on. It means the power or right to give commands, to enforce obedience, to take action and make final decisions. It means the right and the power. That's the word authority. And I'm saying we must walk in spiritual authority. Hallelujah. It is actually delegated to somebody. Or let me say by somebody to someone else. The word authority. I came just to remind somebody. If not to inform somebody. That we have authority here on earth. As a child of God, you have the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and nothing shall harm you. That says the Lord. You have the authority to trample on snakes and, 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 and scorpions. That's what the Bible is saying. And we must know one thing. That having authority and using authority are two separate things. If we have something and we are not using it, it's just two separate things. When I came to challenge somebody, that we must learn of spiritual warfare. If not, we cannot actually walk in spiritual authority or enjoy the total freedom that our Lord Jesus Christ purchased by his blood. Point number one about spiritual authority. Walking in spiritual authority. The element of such. Number one is that the authority is delegated to us. Who has delegated that authority to us? We must know. Amen. Why is it important for us to actually walk in authority? What is authority? Like I said, it's the right and the power to do. To take actions and make final decisions. If as a businessman, I send somebody to go and buy goods in Lusaka. I have actually delegated the authority to such a one. He's going to buy things, take actions, and make final decisions on my behalf. If he decides not to buy or delay, means that uh, my business will suffer. I won't make progress. Amen. Galea Kurusakani and we pass new parent drama and stick with Pekurusak. Gafika Pat Peso Kachambo Kurida. Africa Pachin Sari Chadida. Alafika Pampika Chadida. He has the authority and power to act. It's entirely up to him to make decisions. And who will suffer at the end of the day? It's me. Amen. Oh my God, we have authority to act upon the word of God. To preach the gospel. Hallelujah. To pray for the sick and to cast out the demons. If we don't do suffer at the end of the day. I want just to encourage somebody that will continue praying. Continue fasting. Continue interceding. Continue giving. You don't know how many people have been served because of that prayer. You don't know the marriages that have been restored because of your prayers. You don't know the people that have been saved from accidents because of your prayer. The enemy planned to do something, but because you prayed, somebody was saved. Oh my God, that accident could not happen because of that prayer. Oh my God, the marriage that was supposed to... I mean, it could not just work, the divorce and all that, because of that prayer. Somebody, because of your prayer, God healed. My God, my God, I challenge somebody to keep with your commitment. Keep on praising God. Keep on praying. Something at the end of the day. Oh, we have that authority and the power to pray. Power to cast out devils. That is our part. Keep on praying. Keep on fasting. Keep on praying for the church. Keep on praying for your family and your businesses. Things will definitely happen. Oh my God, by now we could have heard accidents after accidents. But the devil planned. The devil tried. Set traps. But because of your prayer, it could not just happen. You frustrated the devil's plans. You frustrated whatever the devil wanted to do. It could not happen. Remember the witches and wizards. Satan is ever meeting every night. But 
things are not happening because of uh, your prayers, because of your intercession. I challenge someone, never be discouraged. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Because God doesn't want his kingdom to suffer. He has empowered us with such an authority so that we advance, we exalt, and build his kingdom. Hallelujah. If I said somebody goes to Rusaka, I send somebody to buy things to Rusaka. And then it delays. My business will suffer, amen. If he acts, or he doesn't act, or mission or whatever, my business will suffer. So that is the authority that we have. No wonder man initially was given authority according to Genesis 1.26. 1 verse 26. KJV. Man was given dominion to rule. Hallelujah. In the garden of Eden. Man was given authority. But because of Satan's deception, he looked a man of such an authority. He looked a man of his authority. And now what happened? God saw that business his kingdom will not advance. He saw that his kingdom won't be exalted. Won't be built. So the Lord God cared about that. And the Bible tells us that he sent his son Jesus Christ. To come and die for us. Most importantly, because he wanted to restore that which man had lost in the garden, the authority. When I sent his only son, Jesus Christ. So he sent him because he wanted to restore that. And when the Lord Jesus Christ shouted on the cross that it is finished, he completed the work of regaining the authority that man was lost in the garden. The Bible tells me that uh, he, he defeated the enemy. He lent the powers of the enemy useless. He made the enemy public spectacle. Oh my God, the Bible tells me how did he do it? How did he regain the authority that man was lost? The Bible tells me that he went deep down the lower parts of the heaven to hell, so to say. Ephesians 4.9. Ephesians 4 9. He went to hell. Jesus, because after his death, went to hell. Ephesians. Now that he ascended, what is it? But that he also descended. He went down first into the lower parts of the earth. What did he do when he went there? Revelation 1 18 says he now got the keys from the enemy. My God, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forever. Amen. And of the keys of hell and death, he got the keys from the enemy. Not only did he get the keys from the enemy, but he was so handed over the keys to man. Matthew 16 19. And I'll give you unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I'll give. After he had gotten the keys, and he also gave, gave it to man. Hallelujah. The key is a symbol of authority. If you have the key, you have a key, I mean, you have access to open the door and enter. You can enter into the blessings. At the same time, you can use the key to lock certain doors, evil doors. Hallelujah. If you have the key, you can open that car of yours. If you lose them, you will be unable to open and you walk. Amen. So when you have the keys, it's a symbol of authority. And the Bible says keys has given us the keys to open certain doors and also close certain doors. That is the power and authority that we have. We have the authority and all the power of God at our disposal 
to defeat the enemy, to bring down strongholds of the enemy. We have the power at our disposal to defeat the power of the enemy. Oh my God, why am I mentioning the power of the enemy? Hey, authority and the power of the enemy. Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19. I want us to differentiate these two words. I've given you the authority to trample on the snakes and the scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Meaning that the devil has a certain amount of power that we need to defeat. Hallelujah. We have the authority at our disposal. But the enemy also has the power at his disposal. I want us to move together. And for us to move together, we need to understand or rather the relationship between these two words. The distinction between these two words. We need to differentiate. I mean, to know the difference between these two words, then we move together. One has authority and the other one, the Bible says, power. Amen. A Christian has what? As authority, not so. Therefore, he didn't Then the enemy has what? As possible, he has certain amount of power at his disposal. But we need just to know the difference between these two words. We need to differentiate them. Okay, let me start with the word authority. The word authority actually comes from a Greek word exousia. Exousia means to rule, control, and govern. Persuasive force, that's what it means. Persuasive force. Empowered. This person is been, he has been bestowed with power. Power is bestowed to such a one. That's the word authority. <clears throat> Again, when we come to the word power, also in Greek, it means dunamis. Which means, which means the inborn strength. The ability to bring about desired purpose. Can I have, for illustration's sake, I have a question like I have a I have a question average. Let me go Amen. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I'm talking about the word authority. And at the same time, I'm talking about the word power. To differentiate between the two. Here, we, are, we have been told the inborn strength, inbuilt strength matters here. The ability matters here. The capability to do things matters here. But here, whether the ability is there or not, does not matter. He has authority. Hallelujah. Here it matters. The ability matters here. The inborn strength matters here. But here does not matter. Still more that we will not share the Here I go. Here is a traffic officer. And here is a truck driver. This one is on duty. At the roadblock, a man, a police officer, a traffic officer. This one has authority. This one has power, dunamis. This one has exosia, authority. This one, though he cannot stop the truck coming, this one is a truck actually coming. Cannot stop with physical force, but he still can stop it using what? Authority. Raise your hand. Lift your hand. Lift your hand, just lift your hand. I never put this in the road block. In full combat. Amen. I need truck driver. There is inbuilt strength, inbuilt power coming. With, like I said, with physical force, him cannot stop this. But he can stop this using the authority. He raises his hand at the road block using what? Authority. This one has no option but to stop. Hallelujah. Amen. This one has no option but to do what? But to stop. Because of what? Because of authority. Whether he has the ability or not, it does not matter. He has the authority. 
He raises his hand. This hand is not ordinary. Hallelujah. Behind this hand is the whole weight of police department. Behind this hand is actually the source of law enforcement power of the nation. Behind this power is actually backed by the three arms of government. The legislature, the executive and judiciary. Oh my God, besides that, he is actually backed by his excellence, the president. This one has no option but to stop. Because of the authority. When he raises his hand, he's actually appealing to higher authority than himself. When I stand here to lift my hand, I am actually appealing to higher authority. I am appealing to higher authority than mine. Oh my God, I appeal to the Godhead. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is the appeal, I mean the authority that is using. He is being backed by three arms of government. I am also being backed by three Godhead. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the host of angels are behind me. The Department of Heaven is behind me. When you lift your hand, no wonder we tell you to say lift your hands. Because you, that is an appeal. You are appealing to the heavens. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. That is the authority that he has. He cannot, he's not supposed to use force. Um, sometimes, Zalatina. Chai Sala Magavesti Dimu Chai Sala Muratina. Ah, ah, you have authority. <laughs> okay, Michael, I began for them. I want just to understand two things where this actual authority comes from. Number one,